Can we get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah! His restaurants deservedly get Michelin stars. The only things that's salty and overripe in his place is the language. It is, of course, the one and only Mr Gordon Ramsay. Yeah! Gordon, I, I love it when you come on the show. I always do. You've always got so much energy. For a man of your age, you are remarkable. You really are. <laughs> so, Thank uh, you very much. Good so, to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. Now, your kids are all growing up pretty fast. So yes. No faster than anyone else's kids, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do, are you, do you get worried about this time of year? Now it's New Year, cos... You have twins who are 16? I was literally 16 um, last week. Oh, wow. um, yeah, New Year's Eve. So, um, that was a big one. And so, part is for, for New Year's Eve. Do you have to... Talk to them before they go out about alcohol consumption, about going too crazy? Yeah, we warn them, severely warn them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they face the consequences. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty severe. Also, 16 is a tough age, right? Yeah. Because they want to sort of dabble, a little bit nervous. And so they get, uh, they get a little bit overexcited, especially Jack and Holly. Yeah. And are you looking forward to becoming a grandfather? <laughs> oh, f <laughs> well, well, no. No, because I, I'm looking forward to it. My kids aren't showing any signs of want to have kids yet, but you're, mm. you're, you're the right age and your kids are getting <laughs> grown up now. <laughs> you know, I think you'd make I'm, a lovely grandfather. I'm still in my 40s. Um, Meg's 17, just started driving. Yeah. Um, which was a bit of a, a, a sort of worry. Um, so did you help? Did you, you didn't give her lessons to you. Dad can't give kids lessons, cos that, that's going to wind up, up with arguments. Uh, you know, I didn't give her lessons, but I was a bit naughty. I sneaked into the uh, car on her first lesson. Wow. Yeah. The, the you guy, hid in the car? Well, I hid in the back seat. Yeah, and, like, curled up in this little hatchback Corsa. You're, you're, you're very, very weird. Well, you know I mean? <laughs> it was like a sort of father figure just mentoring her. Anyway, the instructor said, yes, dive down. And uh, dive down and sat behind the seats, and the Meg got in, and all of a sudden, you know, she goes in and she gets a seat and she pulls it right back and it just squashes my face. So I let out a scream and she freaked out and then kicked me out, so... Um... <laughs> I would have loved it if you'd have got in the wrong car. It was a complete stranger. <laughs> Um, do you uh, do you help them out at home? Do you help them with their homework? Are you are you able to do that kind of thing? Are you smart enough? Is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> she. <laughs> my kids are more clever than me, and so I, but you know. When it comes to home economics and cooking, like, of course I help them out. Um, okay. I think the level of pressure today is just ridiculous. Yeah. So those exams are insane. Um, I didn't do A levels, didn't go to uni, um, so I try to help out as much as I can, but it's, it's bloody hard. Yeah, but I suppose you learned elsewhere, didn't you? You learned... Uh, That's cool. Wh what age did you... But when age did you start working at? Uh, I started working at 18. OK, so you were in your first kitchen at 18? At 19, yes. What was it? Did you have any jobs before cooking? So I, I was a, um, literally a, a pot washer in a local Indian restaurant in stratton avon Wow. My sister was a waitress there. Food was incredible. I didn't know your sister was Indian. Is that...? <laughs> <laughs> Restaurant. It was local tandoori. Okay. I mean, that's where I learned, seriously, how to make an amazing curry. And that's even before going to India. So the place is incredible. I think I was on, like, 175 an hour. And, and favourite food for you in the world? You said you've been to India to eat. You've been all over the world. Yes. If you had to choose just one cuisine, Gordon Ramsay, what would it be to cook? Uh, to cook? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so, what would we do? Um, I think it's depending on the mood and the company, That's right? not what I asked you. I asked so... you if you could choose just one. <laughs> so, I would go, uh, let's say, yeah, French. French. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I love France. I but lived you, there for you studied... Years. And you can speak French, can't you? Yes, I can, yes. You learned French to cook in France, didn't you? Yeah, that's, yeah I got my ass kicked in Paris. Yeah, wow, loved it. Wow, wow, wow. I'm always struck by just how hard it seems, though. I, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm on the other side of the table. I go to a restaurant, I pay money, I have a lovely meal more often than not. I'm yes. appreciative of the work goes in, but the tension and the stress that seems to be, especially when I see your shows, when you, when you had, in the past, we were doing Kitchen Nightmares, and then when you do Hotel Hell, seeing what those people go through every single night to yep. get that food out in time for that number of people, it's, a, it's sort of, a, it seems just too hard. Yeah, I mean, it's a labour of love. Also, I think the issue in the restaurant business is that any Muppet can go and open a restaurant. Yeah. So it's not like a doctor or, you know, you, you need qualifications to become... You a opened lawyer. a lot of restaurants, haven't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Is that>? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, I, I think sometimes you go back to that dinner party and there's like, hey, you know, Beryl, you know, Frank, you know, food's great, you should open a restaurant. And that's yeah. what happens. Yeah. Uh, how many do you have now? Can you actually remember how many restaurants oh, yeah. you've got? 32. 32? Yeah. Re re recently wow. just opened up in Dubai, a, an amazing Bread Street kitchen out in Dubai. Right. Uh, and do you ever eat uh, elsewhere? If you're in a, a city where there's a restaurant, presumably you have to show your face, but do you ever go out for a Nando's? Do you like fast food? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you like a Nando's? A Nando's is good food. It's good food. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never been to Nando's. What? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wow. But, but I'm going tonight. Um... Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. 
I'll out. tell you what, uh, you were kind enough to pay for a meal that I had with you at one of your restaurants. I will treat you to a Nando's and that... tonight. <laughs> and uh, then we're the, square. The, <laughs> the kids go. Yeah. The kids go. Um, I heard good things about it. Yeah, the kids get there and Wagamama, but I've never yeah. been there. Yeah, no. Yeah. Worst meal you've ever had. Where's the worst meal you've ever had in your life? Because I've seen some stuff served up to you on Kitchen Nightmares, yes. and I know you're not doing it anymore, but yeah. some of the stuff that people offered up, it, it, it was uh, disastrous. Yeah, uh, worst meal. Uh, there was a particular dish uh, last year in California. Um, it was a mac and cheese, and I started eating it. I said to the lady, I said, is this made with condensed milk? She said, no, breast milk. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just... You know, Why was that a good ingredient? Why not just use regular um, milk? Do you um, know what she was thinking? No, I think she was going down the sort of uh, healthy option. Yeah. Uh, have you ever tasted breast milk? Of course I have. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's very sweet. Yeah, it's like I don't remember. It was about 55 years ago. <laughs> <I remember. laughs> so it's like condensed milk mixed with sort of cold scrambled eggs. Yeah, so you yeah. wouldn't really... <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst thing. Okay. So me. Gordon Ramsay, who looks great for his age, he's grown into himself, ladies and gentlemen, he is 50 this year. Uh, next year, yes. What yeah. month are you uh, um, 50 in? Uh, 8th of November. 8th of November. 1966, which was a great year for football and wine. Yeah, was it, really? Okay. Well, England won the World Cup and wine. Oh, 66, 66 they did. Yeah. So, uh, so 50... Yes. Uh, uh, and you seem to me, uh, you're not in denial so much, but you seem to be wanting to, to get every last bit of juice out of the orange before you get decrepit. <laughs> I mean, you, you push yourself pretty hard, don't you? I, I, I got really fit, yeah. I, I decided about five years ago when we took charge of the company and you know, things were just manic, I just wanted to get myself fit. Having that healthy mind, uh, going into work every day, just made everything so much easier. Mm. And also, I think the busier I got, the less time I had to myself, so... Uh, got a great coach. Time to clear your head. So you, because yeah. uh, you run after a, a session when you're working, even yeah. don't you? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, make it a little difficult because time is an issue. So um, fill up the rucksack, you know, potatoes, cauliflowers, and and and. Oh, take so you it. deliver as well. So, <laughs> 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 but I mean, you know, turning fifty-ish, you know, yeah, like mid fifties yeah, yeah. now, staying fit is important, right? Yes, yes. So, um, well, you... I, I'm not interested in staying fit. Well, <laughs> But you've lost weight. I have lost weight. I lost yeah. weight because I started uh, eating less carbohydrates. It's right. as simple as that. Did you have a gastric band? What do you... No. <laughs> what, what do you want to be fit for? Um, I mean, what, is there a goal? Yeah, just to set an example to the kids. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and to keep Tana interested. Ah. Uh, yeah, she was all over me when I lost the weight, <laughs> your wife. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Come on. That's not good. <laughs> uh, but you had you. I know you've done any number, and, and you do... And this is the nice thing about Gordon. He does an awful lot of the, the running and fitness. He then turns it into uh, a way of raising money and awareness for the various charities, and you have yes. a charity with your wife. Yes. yes. Yeah. Tell me about your charity. Tell me the name of that and remind me what you do. So we've got the Gordon and Tana Ramsey Foundation. This year, uh, for the next two years, we're working closely with Gosh. Uh, previous two years with which Cancer Which, of course, Research. is Great Ormond Street Hospital, which yes. couldn't be a lovelier cause. Incredible. Oh, really yeah. Anyone who's been there comes away just... You know. And then uh, this June we start off our second uh, Ironman up in Staffordshire, the okay. one that you failed to turn up. Well, with. okay, we had Four. a bet. We had a bet last time I was on the show uh, with Gordon that I would, even though with a lack of preparation training, I would compete in the Ironman with Mo joining. And uh, you know there were reasons why I couldn't do it. I did yes. have a genuine health issue. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> I had a knee problem, uh, and I've still got it a bit. But you know, yes. but you were saying I could maybe do it and just do part of it. Uh, well, yeah, or turn up for the swim. Yeah, yeah. And we'll get the but most it's amazing... it's a long swim, isn't it? Uh, it's, yeah, just under two miles. Is that uh, two miles? <laughs> Come out of the swim, onto the bike, oh. you know. But how bike. long you go on the bike, then? Uh, just under three hours. That's ridiculous. Oh, come on. That's ridiculous. And then finish off with half a marathon. Yeah. In some of the most stunning countryside in Staffordshire, beyond belief. I bet it's beautiful. However... Yes. Uh, you tried to do one in Hawaii, and even you, and you've trained and you've done many, you came a cropper, didn't you? Uh, well, thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. Well, you did. <laughs> That's a big kick in the nuts at the beginning of the year. Well, how, but how do you then want other people who aren't trained to expect me to go and do it? I'm going to keel over and have a heart attack. If you, <laughs> you in prime of fitness... Now, um, Kona uh, last year, and uh, my second time, um, I just wanted to go and improve the time and, and, and run for... Or, uh, run for... Don't encourage you, another, <laughs> another charity. So, um, I took on too much water in the swim. Uh, so, when you say took on, you mean you drank too much? Uh, well, it was just very choppy, cos it was a sea swim. So, started the swim, um, took on a little bit too much salt water, got on the bike, couldn't hold any nutrition okay. down, 180k on the bike. Wow. Um, and then struggled. Thought I'd pull it back on the run. Two miles into the run, bent down and went to sort of, you know, touch my toes and... Next minute, I wake up in the back of an ambulance. So you fainted? Yeah, I passed out. I'd never, wow. never ever done that before. Wow, but that, that hasn't put you off to trying to do it again? No, I think the, the conditions were tough. Yeah. And everybody, you know, said that. However... Um, and you're nearly 50. So... <laughs> 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 
Uh, it was just an amazing thing to attempt to do again. It was amazing. Uh, and now I want to go back. I don't, you know, I'm not joking, I'm not knocking you because I do think it's incredible what you do. And I know the money you raise in the winning race, it's a, it's a really lovely thing that Gordon and his wife do. <laughs> and you've been committed for quite a while to it. Um, yes. Your TV career is going great guns, of course. I know, you, as I said, much to my sadness, you're not doing Kitchen Nightmare anymore, but you're still doing Hotel Hell, is that right? Yeah, I just finished the uh, third series. Okay, yeah. how many uh, places do you visit? Uh, this year we did, uh, yeah, nine episodes. I can't wait for the new series. I, genuinely, I love seeing you do that show. Do you know there's a French version of Kitchen Nightmare that's just been launched? Did you know that? You're such a <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Because I believe the reason why... <laughs> Come on. The reason why Gordon reacted that way is because the host of it, who looks pretty good to me, he's a chef and he's just opened a restaurant in France next door to one of yours, is that right? <laughs> I mean, he looks like... he looks... He, apparently, he, he ran two Iron Men in Hawaii <laughs> and didn't faint and get carried off like a baby. Uh, he, he has opened his restaurant right next door to mine in Bordeaux. Right. Um, so, yeah. after I stopped doing uh, Kitchen Nightmares, um, this amazing French man stepped up and he's now doing uh, Cauchemar Cuisine. Cauchemar Cuisine. Right, en yeah. français. The um, Nightmare Kitchens. Yes, mm -hmm. and the Michelin guy comes out next month and his restaurant's right next door to mine and he's an ex professional rugby player, he's so a boxer. Is he as good a chef as you? Does he run as tight a ship as you? Is he f? Oh. <laughs> he's a very good chef. Okay. Yeah, he's a very good chef. And, uh... He's got a nice smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a bulldog tuna wasp. Come on. Yeah. Looks like uh, a minion. <laughs> Do people, when they come in your restaurant, do they want you to be a little bit rude with them? Do you, is it a bit Basil Fawlty? Do they want you to come out and, and, and you know what I mean? Because you, you know what I mean? Do they want that from you? Yeah. Would you deliver that if they asked for that? Going through customs or meeting police officers or, you know, just the general public in the US, yeah, they want you to either shout or scream at them, call them a donkey, get two slices of bread and stick an idiot sandwich. Well. Um, so they just, they, they, they ask for all sorts of weird Specific requests. Yes. Yes. <laughs> just, just look, you know, I have a day job, I'm passionate, and so no, tell me. No, I need a reason to get upset. And yeah. so they say, no, scream at me. If you say to some of the customs, I need a reason to get upset, I'm sure they could give you one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a weird fascination, because I, I, I don't know, I just say, look, this is, this is my job. Yeah. You know, it, I'm passionate. And, and I think what they've respected more than anything is I get straight to the point. So there's no BS, and we just get in yeah. there, get the job done, and get out. You're going to stick around for the rest of the show, I hope? Yes, I am. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Phil Dizzy. I always have him on the show, Mr Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>